Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Imagine standing on the edge of a plane, thousands of meters above the ground. The wind is rushing past your ears, your heart races, and you take a deep breath before leaping into the sky. As the ground races toward you, you pull the cord and, like magic, a parachute deploys, slowing your descent and allowing you to float gracefully back to Earth. It's a thrilling experience that would be impossible without the invention of the parachute. But have you ever wondered who came up with this life-saving device? The history of the parachute is a tale of ingenuity, daring experimentation, and a deep desire to conquer the skies. The idea of using something to slow a fall isn't as new as you might think. In fact, humans have been dreaming about ways to safely descend from heights for centuries. Some of the earliest concepts date back to ancient China where people use large umbrella-like structures to jump from great heights, although they were nowhere near as effective or controlled as today's parachutes. These early parachutes were mostly experimental, driven by curiosity and the desire to understand how objects could resist gravity. But the first known sketches of what resembles a modern parachute come from none other than Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, the legendary Renaissance artist and inventor wasn't just painting the Mona Lisa or designing flying machines, he was also thinking about how humans could safely descend from the skies. In the late 15th century, da Vinci sketched a pyramid-shaped parachute in one of his notebooks. He theorized that with a canopy made of linen and a wooden frame, a person could jump from a height and descend gently. While da Vinci never built this design, it laid the foundation for future thinkers to improve upon the concept. Though Leonardo da Vinci's sketches were revolutionary, it wasn't until the early 17th century that someone tried to put the theory into practice. Enter Fausto Veranzio, a Croatian polymath who took da Vinci's idea and turned it into reality. In 1617, Veranzio constructed what he called a Homo volans, or flying man. His parachute design was similar to da Vinci's, a pyramid-shaped structure made of fabric, and it was the first parachute that a person actually used. He reportedly jumped from a tower in Venice, Italy, using his parachute to safely reach the ground. This moment marked the first known human jump with a parachute, and Veranzio's achievement was a significant milestone in the development of the device. But while Veranzio deserves credit for taking the leap, literally, his design still lacked the control and reliability needed for practical use. Parachutes continued to evolve over the next few centuries, with inventors across Europe refining and improving on the concept. In the 18th century, French balloonist Jean-Pierre Blanchard took the next big step in parachute innovation. Blanchard was an adventurous spirit, best known for making the first successful manned balloon flight across the English Channel. But he also had a passion for safety in flight. And in 1785, Blanchard demonstrated a silk parachute in action by dropping a dog from a hot air balloon. Thankfully, the dog landed unharmed. Blanchard's parachute was more refined than those that came before it. Instead of a rigid wooden frame, he used soft, flexible silk, which allowed the parachute to pack down more easily and deploy more smoothly. Blanchard even experimented with using parachutes for emergency escapes from balloons, but he never personally jumped with one. His contributions, however, pushed the design closer to the practical modern parachute we know today. The real breakthrough came in the late 18th century with André-Jacques Garnerin, a French aeronaut who is often credited as the inventor of the modern parachute. In 1797, Garnerin made history by performing the first successful parachute descent from a hot air balloon. His parachute was a frameless design made of silk, and it was shaped like a large umbrella. What set Garnerin apart from his predecessors was his decision to use the parachute without any rigid supports, 
allowing it to fold up and deploy easily during freefall. Garnerin's first jump was a daring spectacle. He ascended to about 1,000 meters in a balloon before cutting himself loose, plummeting toward the ground. His parachute deployed as planned, and though he experienced some intense swaying during his descent, he landed safely. This moment was a game changer. It showed that parachutes could be reliable and effective in real-world conditions, and it cemented Garnerin's place in aviation history. Garnerin continued to make parachute jumps throughout his career, constantly improving his designs. He even inspired others, including his wife Jean Labrosse, who became the first woman to parachute from a balloon in 1799. Together, they helped bring parachuting into the mainstream, turning it from a risky experiment into a legitimate safety device. The 19th century saw further refinements in parachute technology. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the device truly became practical. As aviation advanced and airplanes became more common, the need for reliable parachutes grew. World War I was a turning point in parachute development. With pilots flying at high altitudes and speeds, the ability to escape a damaged aircraft became a matter of life and death. In 1911, Grant Morton made the first parachute jump from an airplane over Venice Beach, California. Morton used a silk parachute similar to the designs of Garnerin and Blanchard, marking the first time a parachute was used in an aviation setting. However, the parachute was deployed by hand, which wasn't always reliable in emergencies. The modern parachute that we recognize today, with a ripcord and a pack worn on the back, was developed in the early 20th century. One of the key figures in this development was Charles Broadwick, an American inventor who created a foldable parachute that could be packed into a container and deployed with a ripcord. This design became the standard for military and civilian parachutes, and it's still the basis for most parachutes used today. From Da Vinci's sketches to the daring jumps of Garnerin, the parachute has come a long way. What started as a dream of descending from the skies has become a vital safety device, saving countless lives and providing thrill seekers with an incredible way to experience freefall. While the parachute's history is full of daring pioneers and bold experiments, it's also a story of innovation, perseverance, and the relentless pursuit of human flight. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.